sense, like, if you make the same request, like, multiple times from the same place to the exact same thing, is there any way to, like, see, like, how frequently it takes the same yeah. path? Yes, they keep that information. If you request the same thing within, within a particular time frame, they will not, they will not listen to it. They will tell you you already have that. Uh, that information is kept, depending on the routing algorithm, there's a bunch of algorithms that can be followed, but they all will change their routing table. If they are dynamic or adaptive, they will change the routing table decision to reflect changes in topology. And by topology, we mean the physical, geographical location of, of all the machines and the links that connect them. If anything changed, uh, we took one, a machine out, or we replaced this cable, or we removed this cable. If that happens, the router will know about it. So, topology, traffic, one of the lines of congestion, and it takes forever to go through that route. Okay, that happens on the highways as well. So the post office track would see in I-85 is full of traffic. It might decide to take a different route, and it will still get to the destination. So they get information from adjacent routers. And use this uh, for, to optimize the routing tables and the path. The way we calculate the path from the sender and the receiver. So they use optimization matrix. such as the distance. So the path could be calculated. What is the shortest path between A and F? It could be calculated by the number of routers there are in between. C from A to F, if we go the path to C, we have two. If we go to B, we also have two, but we could have a lot more. So let's say, how many routers? What is the physical distance? Okay, there could be just two routers here, but these lines could be a lot longer and go all the way up to here to one and here to the other one. And in the top we could have four, but the distance is physically shorter. And finally, the time that it takes. Uh, it could be a short distance, but if it's congested and it's full of packets and the routers can handle them, then what good does it do? We need to measure the time that it takes to get there. So all these things can be measured and used to buy specific routing algorithms to make the decision on which path. This is what usually happens in the network layer. It is, okay, when we have this connection last service, remember we have a field here for service, and we said it's an optimization uh, or it's a decision between speed and reliability. If there is no connection, there's no guarantee the packets will make it. If this packet number four was lost, that's it, it's gone. We're not going to send it. There's no guarantee it will make it there. It's connection that service. And that's pretty much what happens with the internet protocol in the network layer. Um, we could implement a 
reliable service that will guarantee the package will make it there, but that's going to take ad overhead and make it slower because we have to check all the pieces. If we send them, they're not there. And usually that's what the transport layer does. It implements connections. And through these connections, we can assign a connection identifier. Uh, and everything that goes through that connection is managed and tracked. And if any pieces are unacknowledged, and if any pieces are lost, they can be reset. But that takes time and has overhead. So that's a slower service. That's what we meant by when we said type of service. It's, it, it's either uh, fast service or reliable service. Uh, three, two, 